What's going on, everyone? Welcome. This is the Warehouse Series. So today I'm going to put up my top 10 tips for building a pallet. Uh, this is everything I have been teaching on this channel for well over a year. So let's see if you guys agree with these. And uh, if you have anything to add on, please leave it in the comment section below. If you guys want to do all this over here, I really appreciate it. This court is in the description below. Click that link and come and join. And you guys will not be sorry if you're a new selector. You're going to get a ton of help over on Discord from a bunch of people. All right, guys, so number 10, when I get a quantity of light cases, I put them towards the front of my pallet. And as you can see, all these lighter cases right here are stuck towards the front. I'm keeping my heavier cases towards the back. I'm also keeping my light cases within the cross and T. Why? Now, this is honestly after I establish a base. So why am I sticking my light cases up front? Because every time you hit your throttle, what does your jack do? It moves to the back of the pallet. So I do not want light cases in the back of my pallet if I can help it. I want them towards the front. It just make sure that the back of my pallet is stronger than the front. But I do want a strong front, strong back, but I want my back to be even stronger. All right, guys, number nine. I talk about keeping the weaker side of the box facing inwards. Now, this is my order. I selected this case right here, and literally every case on the pallet was crushed in some way. Now, this case was not crushed that much. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna crush that much, but I did put the weaker side facing inwards, so if it did start to crush, it was gonna lean inwards and not outwards. And I had heavier cases on here, and it started buckling. I didn't think it was gonna buckle as much as it did. So I took the heavy cases off and I started stacking lighter boxes on. And then I had an opportunity to put some weight off of that corner onto a Norse, <laughs> but it was an opportunity. And the rest of the way up, I just stuck light cases, very light boxes. So when you have a case crushing inwards, just focus on light cases being on top of it. But if this was facing outwards, it would have been a problem. My whole corner would have fell. It would have fell this way or whatever. Always keep these weaker sides of the cases facing inwards. All right, guys, number eight is keep cases out of the gaps. Uh, it's something as simple as a milk bone. It, it could be the lightest case with just, you know, and if it starts working its way into the gap, it is just gonna simply push your corner out and knock it over. It's amazing what one little case and a gap could do. It could literally knock a whole corner over and it could have weight on it as well uh, because with your jack shaking and everything starting and stopping all the time, it's just going to keep wedging itself in there and it's going to end up pushing a corner over. Uh, what I would have done on this one is honestly, it looks like we got a slight lean with the Dixie. So I would have just put this, uh, I really think I would have just pushed the Dixie Ultra out, put my milk bones in here and then push the D Dixie Ultra back in. And I would have might have had a little lip sticking out over here, but I don't think it would have been anything crazy. And it would have worked out well because we got a case leading into the gap and then we put another case leading into the gap. Uh, so this could definitely cause a problem. Keep those cases out of the gaps. All right, guys, number seven, use a slip sheet. This is my order. I told you uh, on yesterday's Discord Friday, I used a slip sheet. Now I had these big tall shippers. If you even just go like this to the top of the shipper, it just caves in. There is nothing for like a good eight inches on top of these shippers. Now, what was funny was, is I am a person that don't use slip sheets and I was looking for one. I purposely was trying to get this as level as I could possibly get it to get a slip sheet because I know I had two full pallets and I know I cannot put weight on top of these shippers without it crushing. Now, the person next to me was also selecting, and they had the same shippers because they were going out heavy, and he did not use a slip sheet. And three hours over, uh, his stuff was crushing into the uh, top of the shipper, and mine was not because I put a slip sheet down. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> I used a slip sheet, and I, I would have built a horrible pallet without it. So use slip sheets when you need them. All right, guys, number six, keep like boxes together. Now, this was somebody that was, every time I go into work early and I start selecting, I'm constantly looking at people's pallets. Then I started looking at this like, oh, come on. Like, we got Hawaiian Punch on all three corners. Keep like or similar cases together. It would be so much easier if these cases were all back here and had that nice strong back. Keep your V8s together. Uh, we got a nice big hole in the middle, you know, so 
this person dropped their order because they were going on break. I work through their break because I'm on pre-shift. So I took the opportunity to rearrange your cases around for them. <laughs> so I hope they appreciate it when they came back and I hope they had a little bit of a learning experience, but it was bothering me. Uh, the only thing I don't like on here is this case right here. It's not something I would do. I would like this case to be facing in as well. Uh, but I didn't want to spend too much time on this because I was throwing my order next to it and I didn't, I just want to fix it real quick. So see how I kept the Hawaiian punch on the back and I kept like cases so this case and this case are pretty darn similar to these and we got a smaller case over here but it lines up with this one and now we have that nice strong back that we could stack on there's enough surface here where we could keep going back this direction if we wanted to we got our nice corner up here tied in with the v8 splashes they all match up so i rearranged this to show what it should look like now, when this person came back, I guarantee they're like, what the heck just happened to my pallet? But I hope they took some notes from it and they just didn't say, oh, good, someone fixed my pallet for me. Uh, it's probably the second thing now. All right, guys, number five, you hear me say this all the time. If it don't fit, don't force it. My role is a finger's width. If I stick my finger under there, a width wise, that's it. This is going to get crushed getting put on the pallet. All right, not to mention, look, we're still building wide on top of it. It's not like we build this wide and then we came back to the uh, where the pallet should be on that imaginary line. No, we kept building wide, so we're gonna have a really wide pallet and it's gonna get crushed on the truck or we're not gonna be able to fit something on the truck. Guys, if it don't fit, don't force it. If it's a corner, just turn it. If it don't fit there, put it up on the next layer. And that goes with the case in the middle. Let's say this case was, this sweet and low was actually to the outside. And then there was a case that we stuck in the middle then it pushed this out well if we push this out that case in the middle does not need to be there we need to push the sweet and low back in and put that case in the middle somewhere else if it doesn't fit don't force it if you're pushing cases out when you're shoving a case in it doesn't need to be there you want to keep your pallet square all right guys number four don't tie in a high to a low all right, I'm not even going to comment on the pop being up on end. I uh, 1,000% disagree with that. I am focusing on the high to the low. So what do I tell you guys? It can be so minute. All right, we got a low corner with a high inside, and we tied in that high to a low. And being that low on the pallet, look what we're already getting. We're already getting that rock coming out, and by the time you get to the top of the pallet, this whole pallet's falling over. I, just because we tied from a high to a low. If you're tied from a high to a low, you want it to be high corner to a low inside, but I recommend always keeping cases level, never tie from a high to a low, especially this low on the pallet. Now, on my Discord Friday yesterday, I told you the person put it towards the top of the pallet. It's not that big of a deal, but when you're down this low, you want your cases to be level. All right, guys, let's get to the top three. Number three is strong corners. When you have a weak, uh, look at this, guys. This is, I, I don't know why we do this, but we got a small, weak corner with a strong inside. Look how strong, and look at the big boxes we're wasting on the inside of this pallet. You want big, strong corners. What a waste. And then we're putting these little cases on the outside. We did it all the way through this pallet. You could tell. I just, I don't get it, guys. Strong corners, weak inside. Strong corners, weak inside. I will say it until the day I'm dead. Uh, this is ridiculous. This is, this is not a good palette. All right, strong corners, guys. You want those strong corners facing in. All right, guys, my number two, you heard me say this a couple times already, keeping cases level. When you tie in from high to lows, I mean, when I seen this, I just started taking multiple pictures of it. It's just, it's absolutely crazy keep cases level when you start getting cases like this there is zero zero good that's going to come out of it you want all of your cases to be level all of them all of them and when i say level i don't mean it needs to be level with the layer i mean that actual case needs to be level so if i'm putting cases in the middle of my pallet i don't want them slanted i want them level this is a 1,000% no, you're asking for trouble. You're never going to have a good pallet when you have cases tying in from a high to a low. All right, guys, so what's the number one? Uh, I'm sure you guys can figure it out, and I'm going to click it while I'm uh, talking here, and that is follow my cross and T. When you follow the cross and T, 
everything that I just talked about works really well. When you follow the cross and T method, you are having strong corners, you're keeping cases level, you're keeping the smaller cases in the middle or up towards the front if you need to be. Uh, you're just keeping light cases together. This is the cross and T method. Why, guys? This is my palette right here. You have all cases pointing towards this center line. All right. There's sort of an upside down T. I told you, it's almost like an I and then a T and then a cross. So at the bottom of the palette, you build your solid base and then you start working your way up. You start putting the skinny and narrow cases in the middle. And then whenever I get more up, I start with the T, upside down T. So if I'm standing on the jack, it's an upside down T. I'm keeping my smaller cases, keeping that nice strong wall in the back. And then when I get towards the top of the palette, it becomes a whole cross where I keep my small cases and I keep my big sturdy cases on the corners facing in. Those cross and T videos will also be in the description below. All right, guys, that's my top 10. Let me know if you disagree with me, agree with me, or if you want to add on a couple, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.